Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to continue from with our lecture series on looking at this really interesting question, which I haven't seen covered on YouTube yet, which I think is really cool. So is there a product construction for NFAs? So recall from before that an NFA is just a state-based machine. So we have states and transitions between them. And more importantly, with an NFA, we can have any number of transitions of any type. So for many state, we can have, let's say an A on this um, transition. This one's an epsilon transition where we don't read anything. We can have multiple transitions on the same character coming out of the same state. And like say this state, we leave out the A transition. So we can have any transitions to anywhere. And what is product construction? Well, what we did before was with DFAs, we did this product type construction where we had a DFA D1 and D2. And what we were able to do is to produce a DFA for the intersection of their languages. We, we did the union too, but you can uh, more or less get the intersection in almost exactly the same way. So with union with an NFA is actually really easy. So if I have an NFA here and an NFA here, if I want to get the union of the two languages, what I would have to do is to do an epsilon transition to the start state of the original two NFAs. And that gets us the union, I should put an epsilon here, because we can choose either to go to this NFA or to this one. But for intersection, the question is a little bit different because we can't just do something like this because we need to be able to accept when both of the original machines accept, not just that one of the two accepts because an NFA always will make one choice and not necessarily, but it, it won't make two choices. That, that's the key. So the question we're gonna answer is, is there a product type construction, a la this one, for uh, NFAs? Because uh, do DFAs always get the intersection property to work? Or can NFAs inherit that property also? And the answer that we're going to prove here is that yes, there is a product type construction for NFAs. So what was the idea before? So the idea before was that we had pairs of states in the DFAs. So pairs of states in the DFAs. So in other words, we had a state Q1, Q2. I guess you can do that. And so that represents, Q1 represents one state in the first machine, and Q2 represents a state in the other machine. And let's just say we go to another pair of states, Q3, Q4 on input A. And what can we infer from this? What we can infer is that we're trying to simulate the two DFAs at the same time. So this would imply that we're going from Q1 on input A to Q3 in the first machine. So Q1 goes to on A to Q3 in the first DFA D1. And the other machine goes from Q2 to Q4 on input A in the second machine. So can we do something similar here? Well, we could if the NFA is already a DFA, but if we have to do something else because we have those multiple transitions and we have the epsilon transitions to worry about too. So it turns out that we actually can repair this for NFAs. So what could we possibly do? Well, let's see, what can we do? Let's let P and Q be states in the NFA. And we're gonna handle this in two stages. We're gonna have the character observed or the thing on the transition be an actual character or it's gonna be epsilon. It's gonna be one of the two. So what are we gonna define? We're gonna define the transition function of the NFA to, of uh, this pair PQ on input, let's just say A. So A is an actual character. So A is an actual input character here. So 
What, what will we do here? We're going to actually do this. Remember that the transition function of the NFA always is a set of states. Instead of a single state as is, was in the DFA, it will always be a set of states. So we need to put a set here, of course. And remember, we're always going to, every state's a pair of states. So uh, here, uh, we're going to go to a state P prime, Q prime. Um, I should say here that these are the original two uh, NFAs. So original two NFAs. So P is a state in the first machine, and Q is a state in the second machine. P prime is a state in the first machine. Q prime is a state in the second machine. So how can we figure out where P prime is? Well, the NFA, in either case, is going to have a choice, potentially, from this state, oops, from this state P right here on input A. I don't know necessarily which one to pick, but we're, let's just include all possibilities. So here, I'm going to let P prime be a, a state in whatever the transition function f of the first machine says. So this is the transition function of the first machine, and P prime is just one of those states. It could be anything. And we're going from state P on input A here. So P, remember, is a state in the first machine on input A. So just figure out where you could have gone before and include all possibilities. And also, Q prime is a, a state in the second machine's uh, transition function from Q on input A also. So it's just like a generalization of the idea with DFAs. Figure out where the first machine went and in this case, we have a multitude of states we could go to, and the NFA will always pick one of the two. And here, the second machine always also has a choice of set of states to go to. So we're going to include all those possibilities here. So that that seems completely reasonable because the first machine could make any choice independent of any choice the second machine does. So let's just include all possibilities because those really are all the possibilities that could happen. But now let's look at the case of where we have, uh, a, we're looking at on input, uh, not, not input, but an epsilon transition. So here, again, we have the pair PQ on input epsilon this time. Again, it's always going to be a set of states, no problem. But remember that an epsilon transition is completely optional. You never, ever have to take an epsilon transition ever. So let's see. So let's go. Again, we're going to go to states P prime, Q prime. Again, P prime is a state in the first machine, Q prime is a state in the second machine. Well, let's see. Well, what we could do is we could just go to wherever we, we could have gone on epsilon already. We, we could have just done what it, the original machines would have done already. But also, because we have an epsilon transition, we could just stay in the same state. We don't have to go to a different state. So, we're going to have P prime be a member of the first transition function from P on input epsilon. So uh, again, we're looking at on input epsilon. So we're just seeing where the first machine would have went on epsilon. But also, we're going to include into that set um, P, the state P itself. Because we could just stay in the state P. We don't have to go to another state. So P prime, we're going to include um, the original state P here. And also, for the very analogous reason, Q prime is the same analogous thing with the second machine. But also, we got to do a union here with the original state Q here. So in state Q of the second machine, we could have just stayed there if we wanted to. And we didn't have to actually go anywhere. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So why does this work? So as always, we need to answer the question, why does this actually work? So suppose that we take a series of transitions in both in the original two um, NFAs here. So let's just say that they both do this. 
So this is uh, in the first NFA. This is the second NFA. Well, in the product DF, in the product machine that we're making here, well, if it, the transition was an A here, then the choice that was made here was exactly one of the choices that was made in the original machines, and and a very analogous thing with the epsilon uh, transitions also. So, uh, what do we do here? Well, the only thing that's left is what are the final states? So, what are the final states? But again, it's very analogous in the construction that we did with DFAs before. So, the final states here are going to be all the states P prime Q prime, where P prime is a final state of the first machine, and Q prime is a final state of the second machine. So it's exactly the same reason because we're just simulating both machines at the same time. We're just taking into account all of the choices that either machine could have made in the transition function itself. So what I invite you to do is to actually um, look at this with an explicit example and to observe this in action. With the DFA example, it's pretty clear because there's exactly one choice is always made. But with an NFA, there could be multiple choices. So what I invite you to do is to put into the comments uh, an example set of NFAs that you worked on and to actually show the product NFA and to really give a convincing argument why that it actually is the case. It, I can prove it here, but it's much better to actually see a real live example. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to show intersection a different way. Um, I'm not sure if there really is any other way that you can do it because um, closure under complement, there isn't a really nice efficient way of doing it with NFAs. So there's not a real, it's because there's no way to do that, then you can't just combine union and concatenate and complement to get intersection really easily. You do need some type of product construction here, uh, I'm pretty sure. But I could be wrong about that. If you uh, want to support this channel more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing and it really helps with the growth of the channel. If you want to contribute more, there's a Patreon link and a Discord server link. Invite link in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.